it's always a little bit of a fear, I think, with people. Uh, I know that about my family when they come to see my dancers and they try so hard to be polite. Uh, you know, and they go, yeah, I really liked it. You know, it was, it was about that and it was about this. And there's immediately a need to say what it was. What is the story? Well, I prefer to think of my dancers as accessing your dreams. Going, if you think about the dream that you had last night, I'm sure, uh, it, I'm sure if you are trying to explain that to somebody, the, 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 the logic will defy them. In fact, you might reveal much more than you wish to reveal. <laughs> so you, you, um, it's, it's kind of like right now, if, if someone had to make a play of this, there'll be a group of people sitting and watching, and I'll be standing and talking. There'll be someone uh, acting, hopefully someone like Tom Cruise, will be standing and, uh, and, 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 and talking about this. But we know that's not all that's happening right now. My heart is thumping. I'm looking at you and thinking, there's a whole range of things that I'm thinking about. And you are not all of you listening to everything I'm saying, right? You, you, you're nodding and you're smiling. You're being very, very polite. But you're thinking about coffee. You're wondering whether you should have taken that piece of cake or not. Or, you know, what time is lunch? You've got a lot of things going on here. There's so much going on here. There's way too much going on here that a playwright or someone who took a photograph of this will not be able to represent. That's what I try to do with dance. I try to get into a kind of an underground, an underground. This was called Body of Evidence. It was about issues of the body and memories of violence in our colonial and post-colonial past and how the, 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 we wear our violence in our bodies. And um, this is what it was about. And as you can see, none of it is making too much sense like this um, necessarily. But um, hopefully, as the images kind of come to you, you begin to piece together and see the stream. So, but as I began to make more, more of this work, I began to understand that not, uh, not a hell of a lot of people that I wanted to, like regular people, were coming to see it because they saw it as something that only, you know, people who have a, d a decoding around dance that was, uh, was going to go. So I began to have another kind of a love affair and do some space travel. Uh, the space travel that keeps my feet firmly on the ground. But it's space travel around the city. I don't drive. It's ridiculous. I'm in my 50s. I don't drive. Uh, but I walk a lot. And I, in walking a lot, I find these mysterious kinds of spaces that you would normally just walk across that for me becomes a playground. A playground for performances. A playground where I can connect with our dreams, our dreams as a nation or our dreams as, as individuals inside a public space. We can play the first video. Thank you. I work through various kinds of um, uh, 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 kinds of cultural dances as well as contemporary works, and in spaces that are unexpected. This was personal affects, which was in New York, um, 
and the the idea here was to reflect on the Cathedral of St. John the Divine and and bring South Africa's dancers and South African dancers uh, to connect with um, dancers from New York. This was Blind Spot in the Metropolis for the Metropolis Biennale, which dealt with immigrants living in European countries. This was in 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 Denmark and the issues that Denmark is facing around the immigrant population, where we created a series of dancers from the ghettos of Copenhagen and came into the city for these encounters with city spaces. And we can go to the, the next video. Thank you, Timber. All right, and so that was that was like a 25-minute work that was inside the Albany Hotel, and then I played it in different places. Also did it in in, in New York. But again, the the using these spaces as a as a, as as areas that tell a that they themselves, that the buildings themselves tell a particular story, which my performers evoke, and which I try to write onto their bodies and onto the script of the of the of the space. This was in um, call from before at the Sea Point Promenade. It was a you know, it was one of my more spectacular kinds of works. I try to do that. I try to work with esoteric stuff, but also with work that invites a public popular imagination so that it's not entirely just for the, you know, the few people that go to the galleries. So, uh, and, and combining, a, a, a co combining concept with these large kinds of spectacles. That this was Capella Caesar, which is based on Julius Caesar, and I, I I took over the Joburg Stock Exchange for this. I I, I create recreated these 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 um, massive issues around power and and betrayal, and used Julius Caesar as a metaphor for our current um, difficulties and struggles with issues of betrayal, political betrayal, and corruption. And I took over the Joburg Stock Exchange. There she is, trying to get rid of all the evidence uh, with a so all the rooms had particular uh, scenes and ideas uh, that, that connected with all the scenes um, inside of Julius Caesar. Uh, we can go to the final video if I have one more minute. Uh, she's uh, on, on the top of a 23-story building, and she abseils uh, f from there. It, it was my my take on on uh, uh, the the, new, the nouveau kugel uh, coming down the 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 the, the, the big shopping centre, uh, having taken over that space. It was at a time when our democracy was was maturing. Uh, well. Uh, relatively speaking, and I was I was I was talking through the 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 the, the, the what was perceived as the taking over of spaces. Um, okay, and so finally, uh, to, I uh, was called upon to come up with a plan to bring the Spear uh, of Summer Festival into the city, and this was my my favorite project called Infecting the City. Uh, the original work was done with Brett Bailey at the Africa Center, and this was about creating. Uh, curating works around particular routes in the city so that you can go from one work to another rediscovering the city in a particular way and of course I'm curating that that look around uh, through the spaces but the explorations are around reinventing remaking and relooking space and then I there, sometimes I do you know kind of, kind of basic things like taking the Cape Town City Ballet and putting them in the Golden Acre uh, which is uh, which is very extraordinary people there. Uh, the Diana Page Company, uh, Mamela Nyamze inside the whale well. Justin Kravitz, a classical pianist, doing Hendrik Hofmeier, which is a classical composer, inside the Cape Town Station. Uh, Mandalam Botwe outside the Cape Town Station. Atipat Ruga inside the, the Long Street Baths. You never would guess it looked like that, right? 
called Ililwane. It's um, Ililwane refers to is a cluster uh, for uh, bat, and it's uh, also a derogatory reference to someone who has their circumcision inside a hospital and not in the bush. And so he camply redoes his circumcision in a pool uh, with uh, 24 uh, synchronized swimmers, ululating from the water. And as you can see, the, the exciting thing about this is the, the range of people. If you do, we had about 600 people a night for this particular work. And the kinds of people that you're sitting next to are people you'll never dream to go to the gallery or to um, a performance with. The Cape Town City uh, Philharmonic on the Church Square, Leila Anderson will work inside a shop window. This work was inside the, the immigrant center in Commercial Road. Nobody knew it was there. You would just walk past, and these were a bunch of uh, large groups of immigrants that live in the center, and they had their own drama group called the Scalabrini Center, and they told their stories, again, to unsuspecting passers-by. Works and sides of buildings that make us look at the city differently. So it's about dreaming, about dreaming our spaces in, in ways. Marcus Newstater's work that makes us understand the, the, these pedestrian spaces through color, the political, works around um, our history, around the, the burial of slaves in various parts of our city. You'll be surprised how many burial sites there are actually in the city. We live, on a, we live in a land of ghosts. This was called 3,600 a day, which is actually a reference to 360 women and children that are abused daily in South Africa. It was a work by Asanda Kaka. She erected 360 memorials of dresses outside the Cape Town station. Umjondolo, which is a reference to uh, these, these shacks that come from from places where we would like pretend like they're not there, and we brought them into the city. 19 born, 76 rebels. Clearly, what it's all about, you can see. Um, and this was came straight from the fest, uh, uh, the Avignon Festival to Strand Street, and it belied the fact. And it, the, the the response to this from my regular people was incredible. And the, res, the it belied the fact that art is only for a privileged few. Rotting treasures, which was about Marikana. Pieces about identity, pieces that are very, very personal, about love affairs, big spectacular works, and little small works where the architecture hugs you by Kira Kemper. Works that bring in the color of the city but show us that it's possible to touch in the city. It's possible to touch each other in a way that is caring and not, doesn't have to be more than that. This work was a conceptual work. It was called Purge by Brian LaBelle, in which he had the audience decide which friends on his Facebook he should keep or delete. <laughs> and he had to describe why he has a particular friend and really defend them. He made some really bad moves because <laughs> a lot of people were going, because he was deleting people that were really his friends. But he wasn't able, he wasn't able to, uh, to, to identify to the audience why he should keep them. There we go. So the city as a sensorium, as a space of wonder, as a space of rest, a city of wonder inside shopping centers, inside uh, shop windows, making parts of the city come alive through body paint and sound and smell. This was uh, uh, Fraser's work, uh, Smellscapes, which brought the smells of, the, um, of Table Mountain into our fountains, music, and touch. Ultimately, it's about you and us as, an, as, a, as a group owning the city. And the, the, the sense of wonder of occupying a land and a country and a city that actually feeds us and feeds us not in a utilitarian way, but in a spiritual and in a, uh, a centered, in a communal, in a social way. And that's my love of space. Thank you. <laughs>